Although I am primarily a Apple HomeKit uh, smart home user, that's not all I have running in the house, right? And so what I wanted to do is to see, you know, what it would it be like for, um, you know, to coexist in a Google and Apple ecosystem? Is it possible? What can we do? So this is the first step in that journey. Uh, I picked up a Google Home smart speaker. So for those of you kind of living under a rock, it is Google's version of a smart speaker and it comes uh, with Google Assistant built in. And they also claim it is a smart home hub. I put an ish at the end of this because I don't think it really, um, it's not fully there yet, although it does have a ton of great integration. So we'll look at that. Um, obviously, it works with Google Assistant. So in this video, we're just going to do the unboxing and the initial setup to give you guys an idea of what that looks like. And we will go from there. So here is the uh, the official unboxing, right? It is a voice activated speaker by Google. Um, and interestingly enough, for those of us in uh, French speaking Canada, we oui, speak en français aussi. Uh, which just means that, yes, she does speak uh, French Canadian as well, which is kind of nice, right? Um, so you can do this in English or French, either or. Uh, obviously, Google speaks very um, various other languages. And you can always go and learn more by going to the g.co home slash explore if you're interested in that. So quickly, let's take a look at the actual unboxing. We'll get this out of the box uh, using a little fast forward. As you would expect, it is, uh, it's locked in the box. It's got this nice little pull tab and you take it out. That's really it, right? There's, there's no, uh, flare in here. There's no fireworks. Um, but it's, it's packed in there. It's not going anywhere. And it's a solid box. It's a solid container, uh, which is good. Of course we have the, uh, the instructions, right? So all that's in here. So if you really want to take a look at and go through those, you can do that. But uh, we won't. We're just going to go straight over to the app and look at setting this up. So I'm going to plug it in and we'll head over to the app. So here we are, your content and devices all in one place. Let's get started. So we're going to tap on that get started button. And I'm going to skip the step that has all my email addresses and various credentials. But uh, I logged into my Google account, basically. And now it's just going to go out and it's going to look for devices. And in a very short time, it was able to find my Google Home 0737. Would I like to set up this device? Well, of course I would. So now we're just connecting to the Google Home. I'm doing this on my Apple iPad Pro, so uh, which is a nice thing. You don't have to, you're not stuck in the Google ecosystem. You can go um, back and forth, right? Did you hear the sound? Yes, I heard the sound. So let's you know you're connected to the right Google Home. So if you're setting up multiple of these, choose a location. Where would you like to put this? Um, so I'm going to put this in my office. This is where I spend uh, most of my days. So I'm going to make sure that it's somewhere that I can see if I can get a little use out of it. I can put uh, my, choose my Wi-Fi network, and then I'm going to have to put in the Wi-Fi password, which you guys don't get to know. So now that we've got the Wi-Fi password in there, it's just going to go and see, attempt to connect to Wi-Fi. Uh, this was painless, right? A nice, easy experience. It connected, it connected no problems. Um, you know, it's exactly what you would expect. A nice, easy consumer um, level product, and it just worked, right? So let's set up Google Assistant. So that's the next step, right? So do you want uh, Google Partners, Services and your Privacy, Guests and your Assistant, right? So it, it's, it kind of informs us as to what actually is going on. You give you more information, um, lets you know how their partners are going to interact, what the information you're going to get, um, how things, like all, all that stuff, right? So do we want to do I want to give it the information sure I'll give it permission right so they're they're letting us know that when you're sending this information you're doing that so now I'm gonna to have to go through the initial um, testing so that it actually understands what it is that I'm saying and I'll, I'll, you know it learns my speech patterns so I'm, I'm guessing that this is um, how Google is going to be able to really figure out whether or not it's actually me, potentially, so you could use this for um, personal identification. But more importantly, this is also how they deal with things like um, different speech patterns, accents, regional variations. You know, obviously, uh, English is a single language, but it's not spoken the same everywhere, right? So they're they're dealing with that with this training component, which is good, right? That's uh, one of the issues that we've seen with some other voice assistants is that's not always taken into account and it's taken them a while to get that figured out. 
So I quickly skipped over my address because you guys don't need to know that either. Um, and then the next thing we're presented with is adding music services. So this is again, the world we live in. We can't have everything everywhere. Um, Spotify is nice, but I can get Spotify on my Sonos. I can get it kind of all over the place. I can get it on my Amazon devices, but I can't get it everywhere, right? Which is kind of a problem, um, but that's the world we live in. So with that, we're almost done. We've got the address in there. So we've got some GPS, geolocation services, the devices are at up, music services in there. And now we're going to update the uh, office speaker uh, to the latest version of the Google Home software. So again, I didn't have to do anything here. This just happened. So although it did say, uh, hang on, you know, might take three to four minutes, it actually, I don't know if it updated or not because it was incredibly quick. So Google Home is ready. So now just start saying things, um, ask questions, get answers, play music, all those kinds of things. So I had a chance to actually play around with this and set this up a little bit before I came back to do this video. And you can see I have a few devices added in from a smart home standpoint, not everything yet. But what I was really impressed with is the amount of devices, the device support that Google has already in here. Um, you can see I'm, I'm in just in the C's right now and this list just goes on and on and on, right? You go all the way to the bottom, you get some that are even in um, what to me looks like potentially Japanese or Chinese characters. I can't read it, but um, so it's really an international product that has support really a across the globe, right? Which is kind of nice as there's, there's all sorts of um, well-represented vendors. Um, the, obviously the LifeXs, the Lutrons, the um, Philips Hue, those kinds of things. Um, the other thing that's interesting is that they have vendors like SmartThings, Samsung SmartThings, or Wink2, so they can support hubs or the Abode um, security gateway. And that's kind of important because it's not really a smart home platform, not completely, in that you can't connect it to Zigbee devices, right? The other thing, as you can see here, when you create a routine, um, you go in and you can do routines based on commands, or you can do them based on time of day just like with the Amazon Echo and their routine system, there currently, as of this video, is no way um, for us to be able to do things based on a trigger. So I can't say when a motion sensor goes off, when a Philips Hue motion sensor goes off, go do X, go turn this light on, right? Those kinds of things. So right now, um, it looks like the main, as far as I can see right now, uh, the main point, point uh, purpose that Google Home is going to use, at least in my smart home, is really going to be the voice activation. Um, it's going to allow me to potentially tie into some more of my Google services. So I might be able to use it to check in on YouTube or things like that. Um, but as a smart home device all by itself, uh, it's not quite there yet, I don't think. I think you're still going to need to have some um, additional device like a Samsung SmartThings Hub or Wink2 or uh, something else, right? Which is okay, all right? There's a lot of benefits to this device. So if, if we were to go on to create a routine, you can see here, the other thing I noticed is that it's got the whole list, like all the devices. So, um, you know, I haven't set up groups yet, so maybe this is gonna get better as I go in and set up some groups and some rooms and assign devices to rooms, those kinds of things. But right now, it's the interface is a little bit cluttered. At least that's the way it feels to me. And really, that's about it. You know, the, the routine is set up. Um, we've got the device up and running. I've got some devices discovered. Yeah. It was painless, it was easy. Um, we're gonna come back, we're gonna do a few more videos on this and see, you know, kind of integrations between some of the different devices that I've already got. And we're gonna dig in a little deeper and really see what we can find. So my question for you is, what are you interested in? What do you wanna know? What haven't I covered? What else do you want me to look at? Coexistence, those kinds of things. Feel free to put that in the comments below. I would, uh, I would love to see what your questions are and uh, hopefully we'll learn this together. Likes are always appreciated. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to learn how to make your house just a little bit smarter with Apple HomeKit, please check out in the course details. There is a link to my Udemy course with a coupon code in there.